boom. Welcome to Blinker Fluid. We are here today with some very exciting news from a big manufacturer. But what manufacturer? Well, it's definitely one of the big three. Yeah. It's Ford. One of the big three. Is, are they the biggest? Yeah. Really? I mean, mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes, they're the biggest. So Big three U.S. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have been sleeping under a rock for the last couple of days, you may not have realized that Ford announced a monumental new automobile. Yeah, it is. And I think it's kind of weird what, the, what they chose to name it. Da da da, -da drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> the Mustang Mach E. Mach E. <laughs> well, it's a play on two things, really, right? Yeah, right? The Mustang name is a big name, it's been around for a long time. I think you made a good point earlier today yeah. that the Mustang really is one of the defining vehicles for Ford. It's true. I feel like, uh, I feel like naming it the Mustang Mach-E, you're going to piss a lot of people off. I mean, like, like when we started reading stuff, you know, I, we were really hoping we could be out there at the LA Auto Show. Couldn't happen. We were just, we just left SEMA last week and... Yep. Um, there's a lot of people just pissed off. Like I, when I put the article online, there were so many people like they were mad. And some people thought, I mean, I don't know what you think about it. Like the look of it, I'm curious what you think about it. I don't want to taint your views of it, but what do you think, Bri? You know, the Mustang has a lot of character. It's been around for a long time. Yeah. It was introduced in 1964. 64. Yeah. So you're talking about many, many decades of a, of a car. It's been iconic. I mean, how many different iterations have we had of it, right? Yeah, for real. Um, and then now you got these new performance versions of it. You know, you've got your GT350, you got the GT500, you uh -huh. got the Super Snake, Super now Snake. coming out the oh, Dragon dude. Snake, all these different They're iterations. So and then you add on to that name by bringing out an SUV. It's based on, it's not the same platform. It's not. Honestly, when I saw the renderings, I thought for sure it was going to be, it was going to look exactly like, like the front end of the Mustang yeah. and it was going to be nice and chiseled just like that. But it looks, it's a lot more contoured and uh, you could tell they wanted, it's like they wanted to steal the Mustang front end yeah. and make it look just like the Mustang, but stretch it out a little bit. Kind of like the, like the Charger, right? I mean, it, it looked kind of like the Charger. But then looking at it now, it's very different. I mean, it is different. The grill is definitely different. Yeah. But I guess that's one there of the things no grill. that defines it as <laughs> yeah. an electric, that's right? True. Helps separate it that's from true. a regular well, gasoline engine Mustang. With my Tesla Model S, when I first bought it, um, the front end of it, I mean, it's just it's just flat. Right. There's just a piece of plastic on it, and like when I, I when I went to wax it, I start rubbing on it. I'm like, I'm like, this is literally just plastic, and like in most in most automobiles, uh, gas powered cars. You've got to have the grill so that your air can get in there, and right. that's what cools your car down. But yeah. in electric vehicles, your cooling is all done on the underside of your car with uh, with fluid. I guess similar to what you get out of like a, like antifreeze, right? I mean, well, I think they're following the trend of electric vehicles. For sure. Is, oh yeah. Uh, it, like you just said, uh, not just the Tesla, but if you look at pretty much all of them coming out, definitely the front end is much different mm -hmm. than your internal combustion engine vehicles. I think it mainly, for more than just what you just said, as far as just cooling, obviously that's the point of a, a grill on a normal car. Yeah. But it's really, I think, a stylistic change that helps identify the difference between electric versus internal combustion engine car. Well, I know with uh, some certain manufacturers, I mean, forever, since, like, since the dawn of time, since the Prius came out from yeah. Toyota, they've made the styling really what differentiated between a gas-powered car versus, you know, a, a, a you know, a an energy-saving car, right? Like a Prius. But and it's hideous. <laughs> let's yeah, that's just what I was gonna say. Let's but, be honest. But, that's the number one reason I had zero interest that's in electric true. until Tesla came out. But I think that's that's where the market is, though, is that there's so many people that want to do their part, their little tiny part, one percent part, to save the planet. But when a car looks like, I mean, for some people, for if you love Priuses, you know, love Priuses. But I, I don't. I think they're hideous. I think they're hideous. And the Nissan Leaf that's come out, and every other car that's been anything close to like a hybrid or something of that nature, they're just they're gross. Well, there's another way to look at it, right? 
you necessarily if you're looking at it for a commuter vehicle it's true you don't really care what you're driving you to don't work care. I still care, but some people may not. They're just looking at their gas mileage during the week, and then they yeah. get a car that they can have fun on, fun with on the weekend. Maybe it's a Corvette or something. Yep. Now there's a new possibly electric Corvette coming out, but we're not going to go there tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be amazing. I would drive it. We're, we will. We'll, we'll have one in the future. <laughs> but, uh, like, so when it comes to electric cars, I mean, they've always been just, like, hideous. And in fact, before I bought my Tesla, you know this, I almost bought a Nissan Leaf. I was you sitting did. there I talked him out at it. the dealer. <laughs> I, did. I was signing the paperwork. It was so painful. But I'm like, I just, I'm tired of paying. I'm tired of paying for gas. I spend so much money in gas. I'm like, I want something saving. I wasn't trying to do it to save the planet. I cared about what my car looked like. I really did. But for me, it was about saving a little bit of money. Well, if I can, I would tell you two reasons. I would buy an electric vehicle myself. Even a Leaf? Not a leaf. <laughs> of course not you a leaf. buy a leaf. Oh, that's too funny. I would say, okay, so three, I think the styling has come along. Tesla, I think, makes beautiful, they did it. beautiful it's, looking vehicle. Yeah. It does. But it's, it's, well, we live in the valley here, Salt Lake, where we get really bad pollution in the winter. And, mm -hmm. and the air is just dirty. It's gross. You don't walk outside in it. And in fact, they tell you, if you're, if you have any kind of breathing issues at all, you really yeah, stay not supposed to go outside. Yeah. I mean, it's that bad. And so that'd be my reason, mm -hmm. really, to own electric is to, uh, not necessarily about saving the planet, but mm -hmm. reducing emissions. So at least we live, we're not living in, in, yeah. uh, in pollution, air pollution. I think but number three, three a little bit, yeah. for me, it's honestly, I think the thing that would push me over the limit is performance. <laughs> They've come a long ways with performance. They have. Now talk about that with this new Mach-E, right? Mm -hmm. Now the, the, I can't remember which version it is, just the normal, the founder's version that gets zero to 60 time is in the so, all wheel drive version. It's like, sorry, yeah. the real wheel drive version. It's like six and a half seconds. That's not great. Let me look up here. So we were, we were looking at numbers and that's the one thing that's, you know, Brian brings up a good point. Um, so for a long time, electric cars have just been gross. They've been hideous and no one really wants to drive them with a small exception. And they've been around for like 10 years, right? Like oh, pure okay. electric cars have been around for at least 10 years. Like the, the Nissan yeah. uh, Leaf. Leaf was... Well, first ones. But not very many people bought I mean, there's a lot of people who bought them, but like they could have sold more of these cars yeah. if they were pretty. Yeah. If they had a absolutely. decent experience. So I feel that, you know, with the with the new car coming out, I, well, Tesla changed that significantly. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing that I love about, I, I don't love this car, but the biggest thing that I love about it is that it brings competition. Oh, yeah. So, okay, performance, right? So performance-wise, the first vehicle that's going to come out, and, and these are just these are numbers off of their website. Um, we have not personally drove, driven these cars yet. I did just get rid of a Model X today, a Tesla, and I'm killing myself, like, for not, like, <laughs> I need to find a way to buy one. <laughs> They're so sweet. These, this will not stack up to that. But um, what is the average range on a Tesla Model 3? Do you, do you remember? It's like 300-ish, right? I would think it's around 270, my guess. 275 somewhere there. So obviously the, the Ford Mustang Mach-E is a, it's not a car. Yeah. Right, because it's Ford. It's a crossover. They stopped making cars. The only car they're making is the Mustang, the Mustang. which is smart. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why they dubbed this the, the Mustang Mach-E. No, Mach -E. I, absolutely, 100%, that's, that's what it is. But the, uh, the range on this particular car is 300 miles. They have different Ish. versions. The first one that will come out mm -hmm. is 300 miles. So they're going to come out in stages, and there's four stages, right? Four different models that yep. they're going to come out as. Yep. So the first one that's going to come out is the most expensive one. Yep. And it's at 60 grand. Yes. Yeah, I wonder if you can like add more fixings onto it, like sure you know, you upgrade can. a little bit. Absolutely. 100%. Maybe you could spend 70. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can get up to 80. <laughs> but I mean, spending 60 grand to get a a Mustang. Would you do it? I mean, it's, I bet it's equivalent to your average Mustang. I'm probably going to offend a lot of people here. <laughs> I'm not a big three US guy. Oh. I'd probably go Audi. The You'd Audi e-tron. Okay. But, but that being said, it is more expensive. The Audi e-tron, you're looking about 80 grand. To start, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you're looking at pure money and, and look, I could be won over by the Mustang Mach-E. If, yeah. I, if I drove one 
and found it comfortable and responsive. Uh, I would probably go for one with a little quicker uh, 0 to 60. Um, I know the GT coming out is going to be around 4 seconds. They're going to have a GT Premium. It's going to be in the mid threes. That's not, that's, that's, that's quick. See, the Audi e-tron, I feel like, is a whole, it's a whole different customer base. And that's one thing that's, that I love, I think, about electric cars is when we started Blinker Fluid Channel, you know, a year ago, we were not focusing on electric cars at no. all. We, we had no interest in electric cars. I know that you were geeking out about a Tesla, I love but it was Tesla. like a pipe dream, right? Well, the one I would get is 150 grand. <laughs> I don't have that money. So it's, yeah, it was a pipe dream. So the here's the here's the numbers for for those of you who are crunching numbers, three hundred mile range, three second zero to sixty time. That's the GT. This yeah this is this is the that's the top. This is top yeah, this one, is the this is the one. first one that will come out, mm -hmm. and it's sixty grand. The lower end models will come out uh, later on down the road in two thousand twenty one. So. The more expensive one comes out first, yep. and that's obviously to subsidize, I feel, the other vehicles that are coming out. So yep. 59.9, it comes out in late 2020. Um, it says limited quantity, so chances are, I mean, we're start two days away. Yesterday, so. I'm willing to bet they're gone. We'll see. You I, said I you mean, haven't seen great things said about it today, so of, we'll see. A lot of people are pissed off, but at the same time, like, when we were at SEMA and we were looking at the Supras, like, I mean, for those of you who love Supras and are old to, like really excited about the old Supras, the new Supra that came out is not a Toyota. Right. And so there's a, I think if you're a purist and you really love Mustang brand, like right. the Mustang as, as a, a center of what Ford is, mm -hmm. I think you hate the Mach-E. But I feel like for your millennial generation, the, the younger kids who have a little bit of disposable income, I feel like it's not a bad option. I don't think it would appeal to your younger millennials. I see it appealing to your small families. Possibly, yeah. Um, kind of your trendsetters. Um, it's true. Because it's a crossover, right? It's, it's not gonna seat, a, not gonna seat comfortably a big family. It's mm -hmm. really for a couple, you know, that likes to travel on the weekends and take little quick, you know, weekend trips. You can put some sure. stuff in the backyard, or back seat, excuse me. You can uh, put your dog back there, whatever you yeah. need to do, right? And then just leave for two or three days. It's your grocery guy. If you have sure. one or two kids, right? If you have anything more than that, I don't think it's, to my knowledge, just doesn't mm -hmm. have a third row. So, well, and that's the thing about crossover. crossovers. Yeah, exactly. It's like your typical crossover is what? I mean, you've got, I know in, in this particular electric vehicle, you've got, like in the electrical market, you've got the, key, the Hyundai Kona EV, yep. mm -hmm. the Kia Nero. Yep. So like one of those two. That's pretty Kia small, Solo. though. But that's that's about what this car Kia is. Kia Soul would be comparable, I think. So, I guess let's let's get back to let's go back to the specs. I guess here the numbers here. I, I apologize. We could talk about this all day. <laughs> We're speculating <laughs> a lot of things. But right now. Uh, so the the lowest price point that you're going to find this car is forty three eight ninety five, and that is going to be early twenty twenty one. So after people buy the Founders Edition, the first edition cars. You know, they flood that through the system, come back with, okay, now you can buy your cheaper cars. Yep. And I think that's, you're going to get a whole bunch of people excited about this first run. But then the second run, I think you're going to sell like hotcakes because they're cheaper. Here's another thought. Why they would start with the premium version first. Mm -hmm. I think once people see them being driven on the street. True. Right? I think that's when yeah. a lot of people started to come along and thinking, maybe I do want a Tesla. When you see one whizzing by you <laughs> at the, or, you know, you're sitting at the light and you think you got a fast car, you got a, I don't know, a Challenger, you know, or something that's, that's decent, <laughs> got some speed, and there's a Tesla right next to you and it just beats you off the line, right? I love it. I love it. And you're thinking, oh, well, maybe I should think about one of those. And so maybe, yeah. they, may, I think that's the reason you're starting out with that premium version is that, you know, people out there that are really undecided, do I really want an electric uh, crossover SUV, mm -hmm. crossover SUV. What I consider a new Mustang SUV. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. It really, a tip, it's not a typical Mustang. It's got some of the looks of a Mustang. Like I remember when, when we were in Las Vegas looking at the Supras, and like I, all the pictures I saw them before, like I hated them. They were, like, and I love Supras. Like back in the '90s, like oh, yeah. when Fast and the Furious, when all those freaking shows <laughs> were coming out, out like that. you loved the oh, Supra yeah. for sure. And they started going up in price where you couldn't buy one for less than like 50 60 grand right 
And like these are these cars are like like thirty years old. And now that's about where you're at with the new Supra is in the yes. fifties, right? Yeah, and I think that's and maybe that was their point was to try and come in, you know, because the the C8 was announced at the same time, yep. the same weekend. Yeah. And then the so now you've got the Supras and that's about the same price, a little cheaper. Right. And I, like there's one guy we interviewed. You didn't know this. There's one guy we interviewed who has had every single Corvette since the dawn of time. Mm -hmm. And he actually went over and saw the C8, hated it. Really. Came over and looked, sat in the Supra, and loved it. And we sat there. He had plenty to say about it. So that's going to be coming soon in our in our Supra video. But uh, well, the the yeah. thing I that was interesting about the Supra, like you said, we were at SEMA and saw tons of them there. I, I think I probably counted at least 40 at the show, yeah. probably 50, 60 of them. And they're all different. They're all different. Yeah. Every one of them been <laughs> customized. They had a different different kits on them. They had different yep. spoilers. They had a lot of different things about them. It wasn't just the color. No, it wasn't yeah. just color. There was a lot, a lot of different customizations you can do to mm -hmm. it. And they look pretty cool. I agree. I, I don't love BMW, Right. but I might consider owning one if I knew that I wasn't going to drive it for more than like three years. Yeah. Which I think most people aren't going to anyway. That'd be my biggest concern <laughs> about owning one is I, I yeah. actually do like BMWs, in it, but let's be honest. They're not reliable. <laughs> They're not reliable. <laughs> you're going to be spending some money on fixing it. So how does the Mach-E stack up to the, the, the other cars in the segment, I guess? The other cars that I think it'll compete with. I think that's a question probably everyone has, right? I think it does. Because on the low end, you've got your, you said the Kia, Kia Soul EV, it's coming mm -hmm. out. Um, what other one? The Kia, what was the other one? Nero. Nero, yeah. Which, Which I saw in it. It was, it's small. It's cute. It's small, though. Um, I feel like they're about the same size. Though. I, we haven't looked at the numbers yet, but I feel like they're probably pretty close to the same size. But I think dollar-wise, this appeals to, th this is right in the in the decent price range for a crossover. Mm -hmm. It's not exorbitant. Now, 60000 probably the high end of a average crossover, but it's not bad. It's true. Um, it's definitely about the same price like a BMW X3, right? Yeah, um, I feel like... The Jaguar I-Pace is more expensive, though. What else is in that same segment? I mean, The Audi e-tron is more expensive. And there's a Volvo. There's a Volvo electric that's... I forget the exact model, but it's pretty similar in price yeah. in your 60s. End. So I think price-wise, it fits in there really well. Yeah. How is it going to compare to uh, Tesla? I think when Tesla comes out with the Model Y, mm -hmm. that's going to be huge and probably still from these guys. So it's probably a good thing they're kind of trying to beat Tesla to the punch on this one. I agree, and I... I feel like, I mean, Tesla is definitely, they're not fast companies. Right. They're like, all, all their launches have taken forever. Well, and the first but, cars that roll off the line are tend to be not the best. They tend to get better as they, they build issues. more of them. They have, but they don't the have like significant issues. Like, the, I mean, and people gripe about it all the time, but like the issues that they have are like, you know, like body gaps. They're mine. Yeah, they're body gaps. <laughs> exactly. But people complain about it. Yeah. But, you know, totally. a real car purist, they don't want a car with body gaps. I get it. Especially when you're spending 60 grand. Like, exactly. You don't. But the nice thing about Tesla is that they have an amazing warranty. I just had my car in the shop for a week. And I had a whole bunch of stuff done under warranty. You did. And I kept like, like when they would text me and they're like, hey... <laughs> We're going to be another day. I'm like, okay, cool. Do you mind checking a couple other things out? Uh -huh. And they did. There was a laundry list of things. And so I feel well, like... Sorry to cut you off, but when we were in SEMA, oh. what happened, right? One day we came out and it wasn't me. The car. I wasn't in the front. It's sitting in the front. But somebody no, had... Some, for some reason, the front door handle wasn't working right. And that's part of the problem, I think, with the technology overall. Is that it's just got it's got quirks. But you were stressed it wasn't gonna be covered under warranty. I was be out a thousand super bucks. stressed because I had heard. But it was. I'm I'm I bet you're so super stoked. Grateful. That's awesome. That, yeah, they that speaks a lot for Tesla. They replaced three door handles, they replaced an a a computer control module and then um, a Bluetooth something or other in my car and they flashed my computer and a few other things. So oh yeah, and some carrier bearing, which I didn't realize that didn't make sense to me, but uh, I well, feel like it was just it was a good experience overall and I was yeah. happy to do it. So coming back to the Mustang Mach E though. Yes. How does it fit in? Yeah. Okay. Styling, in? people may not like it. I think it's okay. I, I don't I don't gawk over it. 
I think if you're styling wise, I'd probably go for a Jaguar Y Pace instead or, or a Model Y. Even for more money? If, uh, you if, have, if money wasn't necessarily yeah. the issue. If it's purely like I just going for what I like styling wise, then I probably would go that way. If you're a, I gotta buy US. I'm not. I don't. I don't consider Tesla in that bit. You know, I'm, I want mm -hmm. the big three. Hey, you know, I think they're they're beating other companies to the punch. And honestly, I think they've done a pretty good job because you're gonna have four or five different iterations coming out, uh -huh. not all at once. Yeah, they're gonna appeal to pretty much to everybody. It's in the crossover market that's well, willing to go electric. And speaking of that market, you know, and that's, that's another thing too, is like, I know there's a lot of people, and the reason we're doing this video, there's a lot of people with a lot of questions. And we're gonna get to the point where we, where we as we test out these different cars, where we have more, more answers to questions. But one thing that I know for sure is, when it comes to cars as a whole, just the, the automotive industry, you get what you pay for. And usually your base models for so long have been like really basic cloth seats. Yeah. And you know, you have to, like for a long time you had to pay extra for power windows and oh, things yeah. like that. Yeah. But like nowadays the electric vehicles, it's like they want to convince people, buy me. They're, buy they're me. already, even at the lower end, pretty uh -huh. much a luxury vehicle. It's true. So like if you look at it, if you're looking at a, uh, and I believe it was TFL that did this video, by the way, I'll, if I can find the video, I'll link it in the description. But um, there's a video that was done that compared a Tesla Model 3. The base model was like a $42,000, $40,000 car. Mm -hmm. um, a BMW 325, a Mercedes C-Class, a, um, what was the other car? Oh yeah, a Honda Civic, and then a, I'm pretty sure it was a Honda Civic, and the Camry. Okay. So the Camry and the Honda Civic were like mid-20s yeah. price. Uh -huh. And then the other, the other cars were about the 45-ish range. And so from purchasing the car at full price, oh, yeah. and then after five years, right. it was cheaper to drive a $45,000 Tesla than it was to drive a Civic. The cost of ownership, huh? So one thing that people don't really grasp is how cheap it is to, buy, to drive electric cars. And so even though the base model, if you wait till 21, to get the base model um, Mustang Mach-E, which is so 40, about 44 that, grand. Yeah, your that car is still cheaper to drive than a thirty thousand dollar car. So if you can afford a three hundred dollar car payment, yeah, that's about equivalent to what you'd pay with a forty five thousand uh, dollar electric car, which is crazy. It's psycho. Okay, so here's the the other I think big question out there. Yes, the elephant in the room is oh. charging. Oh, so I think it used to be the big concern, you know, with the Nissan Leaf is. Mm -hmm. I can only go 40 miles today, or 40? 60 miles. Oh. I'm just speaking of when yeah. they first came out, right? It was, yeah, there was a range. They're tiny. I think the first one was 40 or 50 miles. Yeah. Then it was 60, right? Oh, well, 60. Okay, that can get me back and forth to work if I don't have a two-hour commute, whatever. Mm -hmm. Depending on where you live, right? And then the 20. So the night, the 18s were like just under 100, I believe. Right. But the new ones are like two over 200, I think. So. Ford, along with a lot of other companies, I'm mm -hmm. not gonna just say Ford, there's a lot of other companies that have as well, Volkswagen being one of them, Audi, Porsche, are all joining up uh, with Electrify America. Mm -hmm. And I did some research on that, and I, I can't remember, I think they're at around 850 charging, charging stations, stations right now in the US, but they're gonna expanding to, I believe it's 2,500 in the next few years, I believe by 2025, if I remember correctly. That's that's a major investment. Mm -hmm. I think it's a two billion dollar investment. Yeah, they're really investing in this, and because I'm sure they know something that we don't know yet, mm -hmm. right? right? Of all the other com cars that yeah. are coming down the line, I guarantee you Ford's not the only one right now, right? Yeah. We we know for certain, like Rivian's coming out with theirs. You know, we've got Aspen. Yep. I just learned about the Lucid Air, which. Man, <laughs> I gotta say, I do love Teslas, but man, I think as Lucid Air it's coming out, it's gonna give Tesla a run for their money. And they're teaming up with Electrify America. But my point is that you know Ford made, has made this big collaboration with Electrify, Electrify America mm -hmm. so that people have charging station access pretty much everywhere. Now, mm -hmm. there are some like areas gasoline. of the country you're not gonna really find, you know, there's there's well, some places you're not that they're like a now, little more limited. Yeah. But it reaches I think probably eighty or eighty or ninety percent of the population 
you're going to be close to a station. Well, I know when I first bought mine, I was really concerned that I wasn't going to be able to charge. Like, because having access to the Tesla supercharger, because I my car is, is uh, it's grandfathered into the unlimited supercharging. Mm-hmm. But when I'm not in close proximity to a supercharger, like, yeah. what do I do then, right? And so <clears throat> there's there's companies that are coming out with. Um, charging stations like Electrify America, like ChargePoint, like EVgo, um, and there's a couple other ones. At least here in Utah, all the Walgreens have their own little, um, it's a smaller brand, but the infrastructure is being built by several different people yep. to spread the charging across the nation and really worldwide. Honestly, in the U.S., I think we have the worst charging infrastructure as compared to, especially, especially Europe. But that's going to change. They give it three or four years. Agreed. We're going to be right there. Well, because I mean, Ford just—they just kind of silently, yet not so silently, announced their Ford electric truck. Yeah. And then they just unveiled this Mach E yesterday. Yeah. And then they have seven vehicles hitting the market in Europe, but they're not purely electric. I I feel like that's weird. Well, we also saw the one at SEMA, the the concept, the Mustang. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's going to be cool. Okay, but. But if you're traveling, right? Yes, okay, so there's access around your city, right? Okay, I can stop at a Walgreens and charge. Do I have to sit there for an hour? Mm-hmm. If I'm traveling, going from, you know, let's say I need to go two, 300 miles to find the next station and then to get another 200, 300 miles, but how long am I have to wait there for it to charge? And that's all gonna depend, really, because like right now, if honestly, if you're traveling long distances, you're actually better off than if you're like then you're like trying to charge around your house. That's that's more that's easier. They spent more time building that infrastructure first than they have in like the local communities. So like when we went to Vegas, my car has a small battery. My car doesn't do the most on the charge because it's an older car. But with the new cars, if you're like 250 miles plus, yeah. then there's no issue. But, exactly. Because it was like a, it was like an hour, right? We had to wait like an hour depending on. But with the new technology started. coming out. And That's the fast down. charging capabilities oh, yeah. now of down. the batteries, right? You don't have to wait an hour to charge. Uh-huh. Um, I think the Ford was saying 40, let's see. Um, 47 minutes. 47 minutes, right? Yeah, 47 minutes, I think it was 80% charge. Yep. I was reading, I tried to find it 47 here. minutes for 80% charge. Huh. Now, if you're going, let's say you only went 210, 200 miles. 200 miles is a pretty good distance to drive True. Then they take a 47 minute break. Well, that's the because thing is, it might be time for dinner exactly. anyway. Exactly. Yeah, 200 miles. I mean, you're, you're you need like to use a restroom. Hours. Go grab some snacks for the yeah. rest of your trip. Maybe you grab a quick bite to eat. So that yeah. really is a resting stop point anyway. So let's see. 47 miles in 10 minutes. That's what it was. 47 miles you can charge in 10 minutes. That's yeah. not. That's pretty good. That's right. that's crazy. I mean, my car takes an hour to fill up, but. There's new cars coming out that you can charge. What is it? It's Atlas that guarantees you can charge 80% of your battery in 15 minutes. Porsche is doing the same that's thing with crazy. the Taycan. I think it's 85% in 15 minutes or something. Well, that's one thing to consider, I think, when you're buying an electric car, is that not all cars are created equal. Like, no. Um, so with Tesla, you've got the Tesla infrastructure. All your Tesla superchargers you can charge at no matter what. There's some super char- or some chargers you have to have an adapter for. Um, if it's not a Tesla charger, you will have to have an adapter, but really any charger with the exception of the CCS charger, you can charge at. But if you're at a, if you're at a location that has CCS, usually right next to it is a Chatamo. And that's the, it's a different plug in, but it's on the same box and you can have your adapter. He's teaching me right now. I don't know all these things. Well, <laughs> and that's the thing is he, like, he's researched the different charging capabilities. And that's because I, cause he needs to know. I, I, I use it every day, <laughs> but so you're, there's certain kinds of cars that take different kinds of charging. And I think that's really, I think that's what scares people is that they're used to like pulling into a gas station, being able to put a nozzle in, a one size fits all nozzle. I need the 85 the thing, or 87 octane, 91. They know what they need. But I think in the future, I think it's going to change the the charging, the gas stations are going to shift over. You've already, I've already started seeing it at yeah. Maverick here yep. in Utah. Mm-hmm. They're starting to have these huge charging banks on the wall. Um, so the, the Mach-E has the 300 mile range to, that's the, that's the higher end one, but the lower end one, I think is 210, if I'm not mistaken. Let me, let me double it check. It's 210. Yep. 
So 210, and then it's, so that, that's a forty-forty-four $44,000 car. You can then upgrade to the premium, which is a $50,000 car. The California RT1 edition. Only rear wheel drive. Um, um, only rear wheel is 52.4. So you, you, to get the all wheel drive, you definitely have to spend more money. Um, but honestly, after driving that Model X as compared to my Model S, having the all wheel drive, it made a huge difference. And I mean, the speed is a big part of it. <laughs> I love it. But it's, it, you, it feels different. It really does. Well, so circling back to what we talked about earlier, one of the things that would change me to want to be able to own an electric vehicle is performance. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. that all wheel drive <clears throat> capability. But man, the torque in an electric vehicle is <laughs> just insane. crazy. It's like nothing you've experienced. I agree. I mean, even comparing like, I haven't been in a lot of thousand horsepower cars, right? But <laughs> it can beat a lot of those yes. off the line. Uh -huh. Now, in but, a straightaway, it may catch up with you after uh -huh. a quarter mile. In an electric car, there's no top end. Right. And so you, you hit it pretty pretty quickly. Yeah. You hit it after like three or four seconds. Right. But then sometimes your big V8 cars, or V10, V12, can blow past you yeah. on, the, on the top end. Right. So your quarter mile, you're probably not winning, but, but you can definitely get but off. But where do you want? Quick. But where do you want that speed? That's true. It's not if always you're not tracking you're your not, car. Right. Yeah. You're not always in the track. You're not always sitting in a light thinking I'm just going to want to beat the guy next to me. Maybe that's not the point. <laughs> it's passing a lot of power. It's, it's passing power. Yeah. I'm on the interstate. I got to get past this guy, or I'm going to be stuck behind this big semi for a mile. I did find that very useful having that other car for several days. Is I was in instances multiple times where. I, I was almost in an accident and I had to avoid something. So being able to like punch it, be I've there driving and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was, it was amazing. So I guess really big picture. I mean, if, if we were to, I, I, I guess we really never even discussed like why we thought my, my, my reasoning, why I think they dubbed this the model the Maki. Okay. You ready for that? You, you've been teasing me about it all day and you didn't tell me so. So. I believe, and I, and I, and maybe it's fresh because I just finished watching the Ferrari versus Ford movie. Oh my gosh! Did <laughs> you watch that movie? It was it was amazing. It was All right, <laughs> go see it. Um, but really, Ford Ford was struggling. They were struggling hard, and they were kind of being made fun of as this company that just made these really bland cars. Yeah, kind of like what I look at Honda today. They make really Great cars, but they're bland. You're ripping on my car, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is accurate. It's a little yeah. bit less bland. <laughs> but then you've got all these people coming home from war who have money in their pockets, mm -hmm. and they want a fast car. Yeah. At the at the dawn of you know of that time when it was a space race, right? We're trying to get to space. Yeah. Which is why the the Corvette was designed the way it was, right? Yeah. The cars in the '60s looked a certain way because of the space race, and so. True. At the point in time where Ford had to make or break their business, they came out with a Mustang. And so now with this massive shift to electric cars, what else would they name the new car to start this new generation of, of automobiles? But what started that generation? The current, ge the, the most <laughs> recent generation of cars, but the Mustang. Well, and then they had the Mach 1 version. Yes, which, which was, was very popular. Gorgeous. Yes. So I feel like I feel like they're going to piss a lot of people off with that. But I feel like if you truly understand the history of Ford as a company, mm -hmm. I feel like it makes sense. It doesn't have to like you don't have to like it. You don't have to like it. <laughs> but that's that's kind of the way it is. I feel like I feel like that's that's my that's my perception of what's going on. I I agree it's a groundbreaking move. And let's be honest here, um Ford is really breaking new ground with this vehicle today. Yeah. And now they're not the first one out with her electric SUV or like crossover. That's not mm -hmm. what I'm saying. But for one of the big three U.S. automakers yeah. who have just been a little bit slow to mm -hmm. this. Yes, they, Ford has had its plug-in hybrids for a while. Mm -hmm. They've had hybrids. Um, Chevy's got the Volt. But nobody has really caught on too strongly to any of those. I see a lot of more internal combustion engine fusions out there than I do the yeah the, the plug-in hybrids. Agreed. Well, so this is really introducing the U.S. market now to 
a non-foreign mm -hmm. based, you know, electric. So, I mean, Tesla's technically, obviously they're American, but I think one reason why it's so smart for Ford to do what they're doing, as they've stopped making the car, they've stopped all manufacturing of cars, the most profitable portion of their car manufacturing is in crossovers. Yeah. Because like, I mean, it doesn't cost a whole lot more money to make the car a little bit taller. Right. And it's the same drivetrain essentially as a car. But they can charge more for it. They can charge more money. <laughs> so it's really no different than what was available last week. Yeah. But because it's, you know, the new thing, it's, 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 it's weird, but it's, it's obvious to me. And this is why I think it's so groundbreaking. This is why I think it's so significant because cars are changing so much to electric that Ford is throwing their hat into the ring. There's so many other manufacturers who are like, hey, let's build this cute little car over here and this cute little car over here. Volkswagen, they're like, Toyota, both said they're going to have yeah. a full lineup of electric. So Ford was was fast enough. Yeah. And they they we don't know if this is like a crazy lemon. We have no idea of the reliability of these. But I guarantee with the brand name of Ford behind it, mm -hmm. you're going to have more people jump on the bandwagon for this. Yeah than the other manufacturers because they've got big money behind it. Even though it might be, even if it was made with the exact same drivetrain as a Tesla or a Rivian or anything else, it's, it's they would literally buy this over that car because of the brand name. Even if they don't love Ford. I'd, I'd love to see them though, follow this up with something else. Yeah. I was looking forward to, and I wasn't anticipating with this launch, but when are they gonna come out with an electric Explorer, oh, right? It's, it's how it works. So, I'd be, I'd be curious to see that. All right. Yeah. In my case, I've got four kids. Yeah. I'd be looking like uh, probably the Expedition, really, that type of big, mm -hmm. big SUV. And that is one thing that's strange is that, like, with all the electric cars, like even the Model X the, with the Tesla, it's still not that big. No, it's not big enough for our. It's needs. like the size of a pilot. I think it's even smaller than a pilot. I like it. Yeah. I, I think pretty. it's an amazing vehicle. It's sweet. But it's I not big enough. Would, it wouldn't be right for my family because mm. I'm looking for a bigger vehicle. Yeah. And so I, I think kind of to wrap this up a little bit. Yeah. I think this is starting a new trend, right? This is a crossover market. Mm -hmm. I think this is where a lot of uh, car companies obviously are putting a lot of attention now in oh, crossovers yeah. because they're moving away from sedans. More Americans are buying mm -hmm. crossovers and SUVs. Yeah. But a lot of people don't think, I need a full-size SUV. Maybe it's just a small family. Maybe it's just the two of them, right? Mm. Um, crossover works perfectly for me. And so yeah. I think that's why they started with this first. Mm -hmm. But I hope, and according to you, uh, I guess there's you know more coming out. But I'd love to see you know, an Explorer version electric, uh, an Expedition electric. And I hope that Chevy follows suit with a Tahoe that's electric. Um, Toyota. I'll be honest, I kind of like Toyotas. Yeah. Toyota Sequoia electric. They're pretty. I'm on board. I had a Sequoia. I'd be on board. And it was gorgeous. I'd be one of the first people to sign up to buy it. But look at it. Remember when we were at SEMA? I know this is a little off topic. But when we were at SEMA and they brought this beautiful 68, like red gold colored C10 on stage. Yep. And we're like <laughs> putting our ear to the what ground the trying heck? to listen for it. And it didn't make any noise. Nope. It was a bolt-on application. Well, it looked like just a, a resto mod yeah. C10. It was beautiful. You couldn't tell. It zooms up on stage. I'm thinking, oh, man, it's awesome. And it didn't roar up. And I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> but it's literally, it's a bolt-on electric motor. So, like, yeah. I mean, obviously the bed, the bed, they had actually took off the bed and put the, bat, the battery in there. Right. But the electric motor and, and transfer case is, mm -hmm. like, bolt-on. So, with that, like, I, the best part about all this is competition. Because then it makes it more affordable and there's more options. Well, we know that Chevy is developing <clears throat> that crate motor, electric, mm -hmm. as a swap for, Your I LS. believe, any, v, right now, V8, yeah. I believe it was. Any LS, mm -hmm. yeah, any LS motor. Yep. But I'm sure they're going to roll that down the line to their whole lineup. And that's why I think you, you're going to be able to get a, you're going to be able to electrify your, your Burb. Yep. Your, your Duramax Dude. pickup truck. <laughs> You see Suburbans and Tahoes all over the place. Yeah, the Duramax, the Silverados. Uh-huh. So that could be huge. I, yeah. I didn't even think about that. You're Dude. absolutely right. Well, like there's companies that outfit 
Suburbans with a Duramax diesel. Like, yeah. imagine now you're not outfitting anymore with Duramax. You're outfitting with an electric, electric. vehicle, electric <laughs> motor, because like, it's faster. So, well, we got to end this because we could talk forever. But I, I feel yeah. like we got to leave some meat on the bone for later, right? Yeah, absolutely. So definitely, if you haven't already, you better subscribe. Cause subscribe. Otherwise, we'll come find you. No, we're going to have a lot of more content coming. Yes. This is going to be a regular thing for yes, us. I'm excited. Um, electric. Obviously, there's been a lot of things just in the last couple months, mm -hmm. right? Just the last year. And there's more coming. Oh, yeah. There's something coming later this week. And so we're going to keep talking about electrics because it's it, coming. Is, it is the wave of the future. If you Whether don't you like it, it or not. Exactly. Exactly. If you don't like it or whether you like it or not, it's coming. So... And Pick we're one. not saying you have to go. That's not what we're saying. They're going to be, they're going to be, I, I think we're going to be forced to within the next 10 years. But at some point you're going to have to. Yeah. And so if you are thinking that way, start us, looking at it now. Yeah. Let us help you pick one. Let, we'll, we'll do the research. We'll figure out which one's going to be best for you and we'll bring them right to you. So subscribe to our channel. More Definitely. stuff's coming. Look your fluid out. <laughs>